All right. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn to Mark chapter 11. And uh, a lot of things that I'm going to say tonight has been said in a, a different way. Uh, you know, what we really do is drill it into you. So Mark chapter 11, you're familiar with this story, but tonight I hope I can give you some fresh things to think about. We're going to begin reading at verse 11. Uh, let's make it 12 right there. 12 will start. And on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereon. And he, when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee henceforth now and forever. And his disciples heard it. And they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the table and money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it, and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him, and because all the people were astonished at his doctrine, and when Eve was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up by the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, because of that, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. I want you to notice that Jesus used words to curse the fig tree. He used words, he spoke to that fig tree, and he gave his desire to that fig tree, what he desired to happen to that fig tree. Then he says, have faith in God. If you, if you have that kind of faith in me, you can do the same thing. And then he comes down that whosoever I say, I say to you. Now I want you to notice the words I say, and watch what he's saying here. <clears throat> if you got verse 23 in your Bibles, pay real close attention. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now, what I want you to note here, whatsoever you say, you will have, and I say to you, that whatsoever you say, will come to pass. So the Lord is saying, I am saying before you say it, I say unto you that whatsoever you say and whosoever shall use the whatsoever and say, I say unto you 
that that which does not exist shall exist, and that which is an obstacle shall be moved out of the way. I am saying, and what I say shall come to pass. So remember that I said it first, then I said to you, you say it. It's like going to school and the teacher say, repeat after me. <clears throat> I am saying to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, have faith in God, back yonder, he said. Don't have, uh, if you've got faith in God, you can say it, and whatsoever you say will come to pass. And I say that whosoever desires whatsoever, whatever it is, shall happen. Now, if you understand, uh, Naomi, would you uh, put this up here on the uh, transparency up overhead here? Uh, now, here, here's the message for tonight. Uh, obtaining the fullness of of your desires. The statement, he shall have whatsoever he saith, mean that it is in progress immediately after the confession of the mouth is made. Now, if you start believing that, well, I don't know if I can believe that. All right, now, you start, you start developing by confessing with your mouth my dream, my desire is already in progress of becoming a realization <clears throat> because he said, and I said, and we said. Now, I, he said, if I say, then I agree with what he said, and so what he said, I agree with what he said, and I say what he said, and now we have we said. <clears throat> now we have a heaven on our side because I said what he said, and so together we're in agreement, so we said it. Now I want you to think about this tonight. <clears throat> when God said, you do it this way, all right now, the desire, the dream is already in beginning to function. It's already becoming a reality. So what we're doing is believing <clears throat> that which we have spoken is already in progress. Now you might could help it along by saying continually, my dream, my desire is already in progress of becoming a realization. It's already beginning to function. So, with that in mind, <clears throat> I have no choice but to be a victorious. Now, the words, the words of your mouth got you where you are, and the words of your mouth will get you out of where you are. Uh, a lot of, thou art snared, which I'll get to just a little bit later on. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. All right, the way you got that snare on your mouth was by words. So how did you get out of the snare? Words. What put the mountain there? Words. If nothing else, God put it there. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, he created the thing. Now he says it's time for you to move it out of the way. Unproductive fig trees. He didn't plan for fig trees to be unproductive. He said, die. I wonder what the fellow thought about when he had to cut that tree down. <clears throat> so what you do, have you really considered that when you say to that mountain, be thou removed, and be cast to see that that thing is already starting to move. It's already moving. So then I come along and say, well, nothing ever happens to me. I speak to stuff and it don't ever happen. That thing is liable to go back where it started from. What, what you got to do when you speak the word is make sure you don't reverse it. 
a lot of desires go like this. Well, Lord, I'd like to have a brand new Ford. Then somebody meets you and they say, uh, you know, really, I wouldn't recommend a Ford. A Chevy's worth much better. Uh, Lord, I want to change that. I, I, I want a Chevy. Uh, you don't know what you want. So don't, don't ask for things you don't know what you want. You know, but if you really mean business, and before this message is over, I'm going to get into business with you. We're going to come through these things that we haven't been able to break through. Now remember, <clears throat> Jesus said that whosoever, now whosoever covers the whole world, Whosoever definitely has you in mind, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, <clears throat> with faith, it will do what you command it to do. It is words that often put your obstacles in your place. It is words that will move them out of the place. What words you used in the wrong way, you have to reverse that. But you don't reverse the positive words. <clears throat> I believe that that mountain is moving now. Wow, now, uh, now you know very well you don't believe that. You know very well that. Shut up. Get behind me, Satan. I'm doing the talking, not you. He said, if I say, we say. And I'm going to agree with what he said. And he said, what things you desire when you pray, say it. All right, Lord, what I want is I want to be a millionaire by tomorrow night at this time. Did he say whatsoever you say? But there's a word in there. You don't have that kind of faith. Furthermore, you don't believe that anyway. And there's a reason why you're not going to get it anyway, because you're too greedy. You, you wouldn't just go out and just start shooting in the dark. <clears throat> See, what you do, you, you got to get to the place where you realize <clears throat> that greed is not need. That envy and jealousy, I envy somebody, you know, get anything. <clears throat> Therefore, I say unto you, things you desire. Things. What is things? Things is not necessarily spiritual things. Things can be anything. This is a thing. This is a thing. We generally don't refer to people's things, but that can be the same way. What things you desire? All right, then I desire this. Stick your ground. I believe it's happening now. I believe it's starting to come into fulfillment. Lord, let it be according to your word. Here's what you said. Let it be according to your word. You said if I say in my prayer what I want done. <clears throat> now you got to get pray and say straightened out. First you say it, then you pray it, and then you say it, and then you pray it, and then you say it. So he said that if I said, then it's going to come. But how do you know it's going to come? Because God said so. Well, but, uh, but uh, if you're good enough, that may be. Now, did he say if you're good enough? The next verse down below, that does say, if you have ought against your brother, forgive him. It does say that. <clears throat> A lot of people are robbed of what belongs to them. I am convinced that we don't own 10% of what we ought to own. 
I am convinced that there is no need in the land which we live in to be without a abundance of money. God said he's given us power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day, and Deuteronomy 8, 18. And what I'm saying, we sit around hoping and trusting things that's going to happen. Let's start looking at it like this. All right, Jesus said, if I say it, he shall have whatsoever he says. So whatsoever he saith covers a lot of territory. So whatsoever includes people, things, it includes anything. Whatsoever. I'm convinced that people get our jobs because we're not saying the right thing. We start that whining thing, well... Every time I go to get a job, it's just, that's just the way it is. I don't ever get hired. Did you ever go to the mirror and look at yourself? It might help. <clears throat> See, what you're saying is I don't ever get hired. You shall have whatever you say. Oh, Lord, I'm just an unworthy creature. I'm just an old bum on the street. All right, if that's what you want to say, that's what you are. See, that's the reason we have to change the words we've been saying. It is words that ensnare us. It is words that will take the snare away. So when you say to that snare, all right, my words have got, in other words, they say in this generation, you got your foot in your mouth. No, you got your foot in a snare. You can get it out of your mouth easier than you can get it out of a snare. So you got your mouth in trouble. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. What are we going to do with our words? Faith comes by hearing yourself say what God says. Romans chapter 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing what God has to say about your circumstances and situations. <clears throat> now, the subject tonight is uh, obtaining what you desire. <clears throat> what you have in your heart is often placed there because God put the seed there. Uh, if you have a desire for something, it may be the Lord put it there. And so what you got to do is cultivate it. You don't throw a seed in the ground and let it lay. Uh, you have to make sure that you keep after that thing so the weeds don't choke it out. Whatever you desire in your heart that is legitimate and right, God will see to it will come to pass. So he says, what things you desire. What does that mean? The things you are begging for. The things you crave. The things you require. All fits in that category right there. You ask it. You just speak the words. Now remember, it's words that put you in a position where you don't get anywhere, and it's words that's going to get you out of prison. So you, you begin to use words. It is words that caused you a marriage problem. It is words that will get the marriage working again. It is words that caused you to lose friends. It is words that bring them back together again unless they're fighting against the truth. It is words in your prayers that God hears. He analyzes those words. How serious are you about those words? He said... <clears throat> 
you said. All right, there's a woman. She said, if I may touch but the clothes of Jesus, I shall be whole. Mark chapter 5 and verse 28. Now she said, if I but touch, when she touched him, wasn't when the healing began. The healing began when she started for that coat. Her faith was exercised by those words. The moment I touch him, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. And I'm getting closer. He, I said, I said that he said that we said if we do it this way, it's coming to pass. So I said what he said and now I touch him. Virtue runs out of Jesus. Who touched me? What are you scared about? He said, somebody touched me. You know what he wanted? He wanted that woman to give a confession in front of all those people. You received a healing, ma'am. You tell them what happened to you. So she said, I had this problem and I said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'd be made whole. Those words completely overthrew the plans of Satan. The words that we use sometimes, we go stop using words like, well, nothing ever happens to me. Nothing good ever happens to me. I prayed a thousand times that my needs would be met and they're not met. You know, there's principles in the Word of God. There's laws that go with this thing. But a lot of those laws will be changed if you start talking right. <clears throat> if you start saying, now, Lord, based on the authority of your Word, this is what it says. Let it be according to your Word. When Mary was told, you shall have a son and shall call his name Jesus. You know, Mary didn't say, Ah, oh, but Lord, I'm the most unworthy character. Oh, I'm not worthy to be the mother of such a great man. You know what she said? Let it be according to your word. Just let it be according to your word. Folks, this doesn't, this conning business don't please God. You don't need to go around and act like you're so unworthy. He knows how unworthy you are. Don't tell him about it. Just, uh, just go and act like you don't know anything about it. it you know, but folks, there is, there's money out here that is available to you and I that we'll never get unless we start saying it. Okay, Lord, you said right here. Let me go to it. Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 8, 18. And here's what it said. Let me see if it's in this Bible. It wasn't the other. 8, 18. Boy, if it's in here, that's just really good news. But thou shalt remember. It's there. But thou shalt remember. Thou shalt not forget. Thou shalt remember. Thou shalt not forget. It is the Lord thy God that gave it thee power to get wealth. He already gave it to you. But I don't have wealth. That's not his fault. He gave it to you, you didn't get it. I don't believe in that prosperity message. I didn't say you had to. I believe in it. He said, I gave you power to get wealth. It's the same thing that if Jesus would walk up and say, <clears throat> Pastor, I have given thee power to get wealth 
that I may establish my covenant with the church down there at uh, Truth, Light, and Life. It's that simple. That's how simple it is. But no. See, a lot of your unworthiness and a lot of your junk would go out of your mouth and stop this thing of, well, I know that's all right for Paul or somebody else, but, uh, you know, <clears throat> me, as for me and my house, we're just no count at all. I'm the least of my father's house. Now, mighty man of value, get up there and shut your mouth up. <laughs> See old Zechariah, he's down there. <clears throat> Angel of the Lord came to him and said, Hey, Zechariah, uh, your prayer's heard. Heard? Yes. You're going to have a baby. What? <laughs> Do you know how old I am? He started blowing his nose of disorder, uh, started blowing out that deceptive uh, uh, no count stuff and too old stuff, and the old angel went, Plop, I'll shut your mouth up. Now he goes outside and he goes, mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, you know, sometimes it'd be good if the Lord just slammed our mouth shut. Uh, you know, you can buy duct tape pretty cheap. <clears throat> uh, the, the reason we've got to quit that kind of stuff is, okay, Lord, I don't care how old I am. Yeah. I don't care how old I am. When God said to Abraham, Abraham said, ah, you know how old I am. You know, we have to inform God because he may not realize that we've gotten old. And the Lord said, I know you're going to have yourself a baby. You're going to be the father of many names. I've got to change your mouth because you just keep saying, I'm Abram. I want you to say I'm Abraham. I want you to quit talking about that Abram business. Abram's a failure. Abraham's a success. Jacob's a failure, Israel's a success. Sarah's, Sarai's a failure, Sarah's a success. Might have to change your name. I tell you what my name is, born again child of God, ready for the promises of God. Amen. And what I'm saying is it's your words got you in the poorhouse, it's words will get you out of the poorhouse. Jesus saw a tree that didn't produce the things not feeding him. So he said, you're cursed. Nobody will ever eat off of you from henceforth down forever. The tree didn't argue. There's authority behind the words of a person who doesn't try to sit down. <clears throat> Let me see. Do I have faith enough to get this? All if I just had faith. Oh, I just don't have the faith. I, oh, Lord, if I just had the faith, please increase my faith. I'm not increasing nothing. Get into that word and start saying what the Bible says. And get off of that donkey you've been riding on. It's been cri crippling you up. Get off of that thing you're on Balaam's donkey. Balaam didn't get very long, very good on that donkey either. <clears throat> Got his foot mashed up against the wall. Get up there and start doing something. Talking right. <clears throat> Even the donkey had more sense to use the right words. Did I ever do you harm in my life? And he said, no, I guess you didn't. Well, then why are you treating me like you're treating me, the donkey said. You know, I want to know why you're acting like this. You're beating me up. But the van ought to said, wait a little, I think something's wrong here. When did this donkey start talking? Where'd you get that language? I got it, friend of the Lord. You're wrong, boy. <laughs> How would you like for the <clears throat> rocks down there to start when Jesus come down through there and the Pharisees said, shut them children up, making too much noise in town. 
I mean, after all, who's that guy riding on that there horse? Uh, that uh, mule coming down, donkey coming down through town. Who does he think he is? And Jesus said, you shut them children's mouth up and them rocks will start crying out. How would you like to read the rocks to say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, we love you, Lord. I don't want no rocks talking to me. <laughs> but you see, what happens, we have gotten so much trouble with our mouth. It is our mouth that got us in trouble. It's our mouth that's going to get us out of trouble. It's our words that got us in trouble. It's words that's going to get us out of trouble. <clears throat> God created and God said with words, I say unto you, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he, I am saying, it is he that give you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers is this day. You say the same thing. All right? I have wealth. Amen. Now you're lying. You know those people that say that they don't call things that be not as though they were? Do you ever think about them people? They call more stuff that doesn't exist. You know, they call things in the bin. <clears throat> Every time the flu comes around, we get it. I just know we're going to get the flu this year. I guess I, my body's not immune to it. You're calling things that be not as though they are. And I just tell you right now, if I went down to work where Brother Kevin works, I really believe they'd fire me soon. It just, that's the way it works with me. I get fired. It is words that got you in trouble. It's words that'll get you out of trouble. Is anybody catching on to this? <clears throat> you know what we need to do is start talking right. <clears throat> You know what? I wanted to get married. And my daddy was afraid I was going to be a bachelor. And I said, I'd rather be a bachelor than marry some of them girls. <clears throat> <clears throat> and he said, well, you don't want to be a bachelor. He said, I'd at least go out and try. He said, well, let's go up to Pennsylvania and see if you can find one up there. Well, I courted something like 13 girls. Just had a date with them. One was a beauty queen. I said, no, I don't want no beauty queen. I want this woman I'm looking for. I want a wife. I don't want a beauty queen. <clears throat> and one day I found one. But if I had one around and said, well, I guess I'm just, uh, I'm, uh, I guess it's not God's will for me to get married, I reckon. Um, no, and you start going around like this. Nobody likes me. I never see any girls look at me. They act like that I'm a stranger. Mm. Mm. I'd probably be a bachelor today. <clears throat> and I'd believe it's God's will for me not to get married. And when I started talking right, I'll get that woman one day. I mean, I got her already in mind. She's coming one of these days. And she pulled in with her daddy. Never saw the car, never saw her daddy, never saw her in my life. I said, there she is. <laughs> and that's been 46 years ago. 46. I remember better than you do. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> She's going about how long we've married, but we, we were friends before that. You know what? The thing of it is, folks, I am convinced there's things out there waiting on you. You'll never get them. Because first of all, you don't desire them. Do you really desire them? All right, now let's go. Uh, we're going to take a test tonight, an open book test. <clears throat> but before we have the test, let's go through the testimonies first. <clears throat> Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee 
the desire of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. That's Psalms 37, verses 4 and 5. Proverbs eleven twenty three says, <clears throat> The desire of the righteous is only good. So he's saying the righteous is not going to wish for something stupid. Psalms 110, not pardon me, it's 1017. Psalms 1017, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Psalms 21, 2, thou hast given him his heart's desire. These are scriptures that you use when you go for something. Psalms 145, 19, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. There's some conditions to meet. <clears throat> he said the desire of the righteous shall be granted in Proverbs 10, 24. Paul had a desire, and he said, <clears throat> brethren, my highest desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. I want him saved. That was his desire. <clears throat> now the Bible tells us to follow after charity and the, the uh, charity, or follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. Desire them. How did he say get them? He said, but covet earnestly the best gifts. Get a covetous spirit about them. Not the wrong kind of covetousness. The Bible says, that if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. There's qualifications need to go along with that desire. It is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. That's what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. But James warns and says in James chapter 4, 2, Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, cannot obtain, ye fight and war, and have not because ye ask not. Words. Word, you ask not. You don't ask that right. <clears throat> the Bible tells us to desire the sincere milk of the word there in 1 Peter chapter 2, 2. Those are things that's going to make the desires work. Now, how we get the desires of our heart fulfilled? Uh, obtaining, hold that thing up there a little bit. Obtaining the fullness of, the fulfillment of your desires. I don't have it on my paper. Got on an overhead projector. Fulfillment of those desires. Do, do you, how badly you want those desires? Now, let's go over the test. This is the book test now. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this question. Why do I have this desire? Why do I have this desire? <clears throat> Did you ever think about it? Maybe God put that desire there. You may be the one that stirred it up, but God put it there. Because God wants you to get something, the Lord wants you to get something you don't have. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of the heart. Not only will he give you the desire, but he'll also give you desires fulfillment. Trust also in him and to bring it to pass. So, the desire, if you understand, this desire may have come from the Lord. If it did, you really have some basis to stand on the ground. <clears throat> Let me ask you something. I know there's a number of people in here who want to get married sometime. Some of these little ones want to get married if the world stands. Some of you younger fellows want to get married sometime. What do you do? You think God puts that desire in your heart? Sure, I believe he does. I believe God put the desire there. Now he wants you to do something about that desire. <clears throat> Delight thyself in the Lord so he can bring it to pass. Start trusting him. Using words. Dear Lord, I thank you that as far as I'm concerned, I'm a married person. Well, you're on the 15. Well, I'm calling things that be not as though they are because someday. Too young now, but I don't want to make them too old. 
Balance it out a little bit. See, what we do is don't think that those desires, now you can hide evil desires. I'm not talking about evil desires. I'm talking about legitimate desires. The Lord often, <clears throat> I tell you what, let me tell you something. I went, when I was going to school as a young fella, that about all he talked about was, I'm going to be a millionaire someday. I mean, that was in his language. It was his vocabulary. We'd laugh at him. He didn't turn into a millionaire. He turned into a multiple millionaire. It was words, I'm convinced it was words that got that fellow there. He had that desire. And I believe <clears throat> that there's many a person today that were afraid to full, have that desire fulfilled because I was taught that, uh, you know, a preacher's not supposed to have anything. So when I was first uh, in, coming into the ministry, I knew I was called to the ministry, <clears throat> I pictured myself being an old humble fool sitting in a car that's rusty, uh, tires as bald as a bald eagle, and <clears throat> just barely making it. Because that's what I was taught. I saw myself skinny. <clears throat> and so I prayed this humble prayer. Dear Lord, if you don't want to give me anything, it's okay. Just help me to be satisfied. And if you want me to go through trials and tests, it's all right. And I started getting trials and tests, and it wasn't all right. One day I decided, you know, maybe I better use some sense here instead of tradition. And I got on my neck before the Lord. Not my face, my neck. <clears throat> I, my head wasn't working. <laughs> I said, Lord, all that commitment I made and all that covenant I made with you, I, I want a, this and all that thing. Is it all right with you? Uh, uh, I remember the blood cleanses me from all foolishness. And I made a stupid remark here. I don't believe you want me to be skinny and run an old automobile like I'm running. <clears throat> and I started gaining weight. <laughs> you know what? I told my wife, now listen, I had a desire to be what the Lord wanted me to be. And I was serious about it. But I said, that ain't what you want me to be. I'm sure of that. You don't want me to be that kind of a guy. So <clears throat> I said, Lord, if you change it and you get me on the right track here, I'm still going to serve you, but I'm going to serve you with the money in my pocket and everything. And you know what? Things started changing. So <clears throat> when we went into full-time ministry, this dear sweet wife of mine, having that religious theology, said to me, she said, well, Daniel, we're going to be out on the road most of the time. I guess we'll have to learn to eat bologna sandwiches. And I said, bologna. <laughs> I said, pizza too. <laughs> but we did start out, we'd go out and we'd buy an old... Back in them days, McDonald's, uh, they had uh, <clears throat> a leather... Uh, a leather... Uh, meat cakes, tough as leather, put a lot of ketchup on them so you can get them down. They make them better than that. Now they're about to go out of business trying to cook them things like that. And so we'd give thanks for this old cake. One day the Lord said to me, I can't bless stingy people. And I said, stingy? I don't know that I'm stingy. He said, you're very stingy. You don't have faith enough to believe that I'll feed you. You have to buy the cheapest burger and, and don't even get enough to eat. You're buying all the cheap stuff you can find because you're afraid I can't take care of you. And he said, I don't bless stingy people. Suddenly my desire changed. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, when you're out on the road, eat. If you want a hamburger, eat a hamburger, but you're not eating hamburgers because you can't afford anything else. He said, I'll bless you. If you get rid of that skinny or uh, stingy stuff, 
Boy, I said, Esther, I heard from heaven words. And I started using words like this. We gonna eat. I don't know where the money's coming from, but we gonna eat. And I'll tell you, we, I remember going into this restaurant and I looked at that menu. Back in them days, you know, you could, meals was cheaper than they are today. <clears throat> we looked at that menu and it said something like $8 for a meal? Who? Eight dollars? <laughs> Words. Mm -hmm. Can't afford it. Carry duct tape with you. You know what? I said, Esther, we're going to do what the Lord says do. And I had to fight with my head. <clears throat> and we sat down and we ate that meal and I said, you enjoy it. Let's not go thinking about the money. And you know what started happening? We'd go to a restaurant and somebody would come by and say, the Lord told me to pay your bill. Oh. And of course, back in them days, we didn't want anybody giving us anything. But we didn't know what to do except say thank you. Go somewhere else. And then, then uh, they all know this story. And I'm going to repeat because it it's funny. We got that old schoolhouse up yonder, and Sister Pat had a birthday. And they said, it's all on the, everybody, it's on your own. You know, what they call that? Dutch Street. Sarah Street? Dutch Street. Oh. <laughs> Dutch Street. Well, whatever the treat was. And so, I said, let me see. I, I think the, uh, uh, the uh, lobster lags. <laughs> Lord help me, crab legs. Crab legs. Fra no, the crab legs, they had crab legs too. I said, Esther, let's really spurge tonight. Let's buy crab legs. I think it was $15. We never paid $15. $18. We never paid $18 for anything. But I said, Esther, let's, let's really get into it tonight. Others are buying them. We go act like we're in with them. <clears throat> We didn't want to know had very little money, but we're going to act like it. <laughs> so we ate. And as soon as I finished, we frog legs and these crab legs and all the goodies. And then I thought, pocketbook. No, I said, we're going to enjoy this. I looked at my wife and said, listen, we're having a good time, aren't we? Don't think of the bill. Got up there to pay for this outrageously high-priced meal. And a lady smiled and said, your bill is paid. I said, no, ma'am, I don't think so. I said, we were setting up yonder. She said, I know where you were setting. It's paid. Somebody paid it. <clears throat> you know what the first thing came out of our mouth and walked out the door? Whoever paid that. I guess they thought we was ridiculous paying that much for our meal. And... <laughs> It was words get you in trouble. And I said, no, 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 we're not gonna let them other people worry about that. I'm gonna enjoy that. And I've been enjoyed ever since. I often think of that old school house. <clears throat> That's not where I went to school, but it is where I learned something. <clears throat> oh, let me see. He got this thing buzzing at the... <clears throat> Now, question, the next question is, have you used appropriate scriptures in requesting your desire? Did you back it up a scripture? Did you really decide now, okay, is it scriptural? Okay. Now, Psalms 119.58 is one I used a lot of times. I have entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to thy word. Uh, and I'd say, now, Lord, have favor. I'm asking your favor. I need this. And I'm using this Bible verse to remind you, you said, that I can have whatsoever I say. And you start saying it. Don't do like I did. Get away from that stuff. You see, once you get in that trap, then you, you have to try to excuse yourself. You don't excuse yourself for using wrong words. You change your vocabulary. <clears throat> 
He said, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe you'll have that. It's coming to pass already. When I said we are poor, it was coming to pass immediately. And I'm saying tonight, <clears throat> I don't know where it's at, but I own a track of land with a lake on it. It's got fish in it. Hallelujah. It's coming. And it's not going to be that one back there in the woods where the cows tramp it all to pieces. <laughs> it looks like a hatchery for toads and mosquitoes. Five <laughs> days saw that lake. Come on, that's an insult to God's intelligence. Go shake me back there and show me a leg. I said, we can make mud puddles right here. <clears throat> Ain't no fish in that thing, man. I wouldn't, unless it was catfish that was buried in the mud. Uh, <clears throat> See, the thing of it is, folks, is start talking. What do you want? Start talking it. Using scripture. All right, the Bible says... What things you desire when you pray? He said, I can have it. He said, whosoever, I'm whosoever. If it don't come to pass, I'm going to find out why it didn't. Because it may be greed or selfishness or uh, envy or something else. But I'm going to press toward it. I'm going to get it. It's already coming to pass. I took a little while to get a boat, but I got me a boat, folks. Then that thing floats too. I pictured myself and my wife and I in that thing out there floating on that lake enjoying that breeze. Sun smiling down on the lake. Fish jumping all around us. Bluebird singing in a tree nearby. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> Mary said, okay. Let it be according to your word. And the angel departed from her. You know what he did? As soon as she said, let it be according to your word, her words, her words, sent that angel away. That angel said, all right, I'm going back and tell the Father I heard you say, let it be according to your word. Wow, did you ever think about what could happen if we start using words? Use words to loose the words you one time said and bind other words to you. You use words, got you in trouble, now use words to get you out of trouble. <clears throat> All right, I hope y'all get this tonight because I, I want you to really get it. Amen. You know, oh, I've got so much pain. Didn't he say he healed a thorn disease? Oh, but I got this pain. I don't, the Lord don't ever answer my prayer. I don't know what it is, but my back is hurt. Yeah, and you're talking yourself into trouble. How about saying, well, it's a realization my back hurts. I got arthritis, rheumatism, or whatever it is. But I'm going to say what he said. He said, whosoever shall say whatsoever, and whatsoever you desire when you say it, and I'm saying it. I'm saying it. <clears throat> I want you to go home tonight and start saying what you want to come to pass. And now listen, I'm not finished with this message yet. I still got another seven points or so to go. <clears throat> question, next question, I don't have them numbered. Does anyone else agree with your desires? The Bible says, again, I say unto you, if two of you shall agree as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done. Words, ask, you ask. Let somebody else agree with you. So now, he said, I say unto you, I say what he says, now we say what he says, and now he and we are all in agreement. Heaven's got to come through somehow, some way. You know what, folks? I just noticed some things that's about to happen to us 
Things have already started happening. I mean, just one right after the other. Things that took a long time to come through. But I mean to tell you, I know it's more coming. Holy! How many of y'all would like to have it to the extent that you can go to a grocery store and you don't have to count your pennies? How many of you would like to just... Uh, <clears throat> Pay your rent with a smile on your face or pay your house payment or have it paid off or whatever. How would you like to just go out and just pay cash for an automobile? Just play old downright cash for it. It's all available. I want you to see yourself in that kind of a shape. <clears throat> I called the bank today. It's crazy how they know everything. Called a bank today and asked them what the interest rates are now. If I uh, want to put some money in their savings for a little bit until I get a place for it. Uh, if it's in the checking account, she said it's 0.1%, 1% 1 of 10% or something like that. I said, oh, come on. Let, yeah, he's got anything better than that. <laughs> well, she said if you put $25,000 in... You know, you can get four point something, you know, uh, if you get 25. Oh, I said, no problem. <laughs> you know what? The, the first thing you know, I heard, well, you have this much money in this checking account, you got this much money in that checking account. And I said, oh, yeah, how do you know? I mean, you know, she already knows. <laughs> now, I'm not going to tell you how much it is. I ain't not nobody come borrow money off me. <laughs> but it's at least ten dollars. I tell you what I'm saying that for. Folks, there used to be a time we was walking around talking like poor people. And we don't talk like poor people anymore. We go up to the grocery store. Of course I'm older than you are. I mean, some of you. Uh <clears throat> but I mean, we don't go up there and say, do I have money enough to pay for this? You know where we got that? Is start talking right. We had to learn to talk right. And I'm not bragging about how much we got because you don't know what we got. I'm not rich. But I'll tell you, I'm rich. Amen. I mean to tell you, I, I've got stuff gunning it ready to overflow. Man, I mean to tell you, I got blessings coming in from the north, south, east, and west, from heaven and up and down. I got blessings coming, blessings you ain't seen before. And I tell you what, folks, one day we'll have a fishing trip out there on my lake. <clears throat> Everybody want to come fish? <clears throat> have a fish fry out there too, brother. Bring your grill. Now let me, let me show you how ridiculous this is. Well, if I don't get it, well, you just now, what you just did now was just this and all, everything you said before. Well, I mean, you know, maybe it's not God's will. I thought you said you had one coming. Well, but uh, you have to use, I tell you what, this is what you'll hear. <clears throat> Take it easy, young man. Take it easy, young man. I tell you, you don't know what God will allow to do. I do so know what God's going to do. I know exactly what God's going to do. I said, Lord, I need a, a son-in-law. <laughs> got one coming. I have got one coming for the rest of y'all, too. I mean, not everybody. I mean... <laughs> Not a son-in-law, but I tell you what, y'all get ready. You understand? All you people that's not married in there that's old enough to get married and got that desire in your heart, you better get ready. You hear me? Amen. Some jewel may walk through those doors someday. You've never seen her or him before, but boy, when you see that smile on his face, or her face, Heaven sends good stuff to people. 
You say, well, it's too late. Who said it's too late? How do you know how old too late is? You ever hear of anybody being too late? It was too late for Abraham. Entirely too late. Why did the Lord wait that long? i tell you what. I want to preach to y'all one day on a subject entitled I Am. I got a new revelation on I Am. A brand new revelation on I Am. I know why God said I Am that I Am now. I didn't know before. I preached on that, but I never preached this. <clears throat> Y'all want to hear it someday? Amen. All right, Dave, let's lift an offering. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm being silly tonight. I'm trying to get y'all woke up here, some of these sleepy people. Don't say I don't have a job, doesn't have a thing to do with it. We used to go to Eva's restaurant over there, and every time we was in that restaurant, somebody paid our meal every time. So I said, maybe we better not go back anymore. You know why? Because I didn't want to make it look like it was, we was baggers. <laughs> Wrong talk. Go more. I mean, you see, what, what you got to do is readjust this apparatus up here. You got to think that thing different. I got to think, yes, these desires are coming to pass. I had a backlash on this stuff that I had. So I had to say, all right, Satan, you're not killing me anymore. I've done been killed enough. I'm all ready. I'll tell you what. I'm not a defeated individual. I got legs and I can kick. <clears throat> I'll tell you what I got a mouth I can remove mountains with. Does anybody agree with you? Now, here's another. How serious are you to receive that desire? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Old Jacob, he's out there alone, wrestling with some character. And that fellow said, let me go, let me go for the day breaketh. Jacob's response was, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now people's got a problem with that blessing business. Jacob wanted blessing, that's what he wanted. Leave me alone. He said, I'm not going to do it. That heavenly messenger said, do you realize that you have power with God and man? That man could have broke that, that angelical host or whoever he was. The, I believe it was the Lord Jesus Christ is who I'm thinking it might have been. But whoever it was, I tell you what, I'm come to the conclusion that Jacob couldn't have held that fella. He couldn't have held that spirit or whatever. But I tell you what he did, he said, I'm not letting you go. To, and this fellow said, your name will be changed to Israel because you have power with God and man. And I think it's time for us to get power with God and man. How bad did you want that desire? I mean, that desire is just burning in your heart. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. Start speaking it. I gotta have it. I need a new automobile. I got it coming. I don't want just a rattle trap. Don't send me a Volkswagen. I don't know them come on Volkswagen. That's a footstool. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm getting to the place where I'm tired of all this stuff that we're going through and this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need money. I tell you, God's got more money than all of us put together. 
And he's got it ready to hand to us. All we need to do is start talking right and walking right and thinking right and acting right and treating each other right and living right. Well, now, after you said all that, now you completely scared me up now. Get up there and start saying, I will walk right. I will talk right. I will think right. I will treat my neighbor right. I will have a good marriage. I will love my wife. I will love my husband. I'm going to do it right. Words. Words is what got you in trouble. Words will get you out of it. That's what we ought to call this. Words get you out of it. Words got you in and words get you out of it. It was words that you put that put you right here on the face of this earth. And it's words will keep you here for a while. You realize that? <clears throat> now don't act so sanctified, folks. It's good to be sanctified, but I'm trying to tell you. I'm not talking in a chicken house. This is not a chicken house. This is a real church. I'd like for every one of you stop thinking about your pocketbook being flat. Start thinking about it looking big. I'd like for this church to be so full of people saying, you know, I don't know how to say this, but... I've just been blessed at overrunning and overrunning and overrunning. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm just so blessed. I've told this story before up in Maryland. There was a multiple millionaire up there. And he happened to park in our Sunday school class one time. <clears throat> Back in them days, Sunday school class. And he's sitting there. <clears throat> and he said, folks, don't ever try to get as wealthy as I am. It's really a burden. It's really a burden to have as much money as I got. Everybody wants to borrow money or somebody wants charity or something. He said it's just a burden to have it. And I never forgot, I was a young man. <clears throat> I looked at him. I said, Brother Martin, my Bible tells me, bear ye one another's burdens. I have come to bear your burden. Give me some of that money. <laughs> You know what the man did? He laughed. He didn't want to give any of it away. He could have handed me a million dollars, probably. <clears throat> Still had a million left. But you see, you talk like that. Sure, you want the burden of wealth. What you do is drop it on the Lord. He said, cast your burden upon me. Forget the burden end of it. Listen, folks, this is not a prosperity message as such. It's to get you prosperous in all areas. How serious are you about that desire? How much you want that desire? I, I've done asked you that question now, but <clears throat> Jacob said, I got to have it. I got to have it. I got to have it. The fellow said, leave me loose. It means I'm not going to give it to you is what it means. Let me have it. I got to have it. I'll tell you what, you get an idea like this, that you can make it. <clears throat> I went to school, they made fun of me, Daniel Boone, calls for more elbow room. I go home like a whip cat and said to my dad, those boys are treating me bad. He said, I'll tell you what you do tomorrow. <clears throat> you go to school, <clears throat> and he said, they start making fun of you. Go like this, say, yes, sir, I'm Daniel Boone. I want more elbow room. Get out of my way, boys. I was too shy to do it. But my daddy said, do it. I went to school and they started saying, saw me coming in school. Here come Daniel Boone crying for more elbow room. I set my dinner bucket down <clears throat> and my school books. And I said, boys. Make room for Daniel Boom. Boy, everybody looked like I slapped them in the face. Never heard no more out of it. Then it changed it. I done told you all that ten times probably, but I did tell you eleven. <laughs> so you don't get in that category. 
I got to be a friend of the people at school. <clears throat> you know what? I just tell you right now, there's blessings out there waiting for some of you. You'll never get them until you start talking about it. Believe it or not, you can have a fort and it'll run. Don't go ask Dave whether it's all right to get a Ford. The Lord, the Lord may send you a Ford. <laughs> but don't say I can't afford anything but a Ford. <laughs> Who will benefit from the desire? That's another question you need asked. Who will benefit from this desire? Just you? <clears throat> He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. In Romans chapter 4, verse 20, speaking of Abraham. Abraham saying, <clears throat> you know what? I'm going to benefit people all over with this thing. I'm going to be the father of many nations. That's the wrong thing to say, Abraham. You don't say, I will be the father of many nations. God said about you, Abraham, that you are the father of many nations. Well, but uh, no, talk God's language. He'll agree with you when you talk God's language. He's not going to agree with your religion. Well, but you have to be honest about it. God said, call things that be not as though they were. <clears throat> Somebody was telling me that uh, one day to how ridiculous that was, and I said, well, then you better get on God because he's the one who told us to do it. Oh, he did? Yeah. I tell you what, God wants us to act like we got more than we got. How many of you can picture yourself living in an old rattle trap of a house? Doors falling off. Roof leaking. And calling it home. How many of you can see something else? You already know about them leaking roofs. <clears throat> You get up on top of the roof when it's raining, try to fix it, get all wet, come down, the sun will come out. <clears throat> Had that old stuff years ago that said you can put it on when it's raining. So you get up there at old mud dauber stuff and snare it all over you and everything else and <clears throat> it kind of, it has a double meaning. It gets on you and on the house both. And uh, then when you come down, the sun comes out. And the sun looks down at you and grins like, see, I told you. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. I'll tell you what, who's going to benefit from that desire? Somebody's going to benefit from the desires of my heart. Make a decision. Huh. <laughs> Well, goodbye. <clears throat> how would you <laughs> how would you, how would you how would the full feminine of your desire affect you? All right, let me just be realistic here. All right, I have a lake. It's got fish in it. And uh, how's it gonna affect me? All right, if I fish and fish and fish and fish and I'm fishing instead of preaching, I'm fishing instead of doing things I'm doing, I'm fishing instead of praying, it's going to affect me wrong. So I have to get my thinking right. I can own a lake. Hey, listen, folks, I can own a lake and the fish will get on my line when I tell them to. <clears throat> so you can't have covetousness. You ask and receive not. Because you asked it missed that you may consume it upon your own lust. You may say, well, okay, that's a James chapter 4 or 3. <clears throat> now, the next question. How will others be affected or influenced if this desire is granted? Well, 
Now Israel had the wrong idea. In Psalms 106, 15, listen to this. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness to their soul. I tell you, folks, if you want something from God, you better not go around and grump about everything. <clears throat> I tell you, years ago, uh, uh, we had a car that was falling to pieces. <clears throat> we was out gathering up people for church, and the car won't have work, and we don't have money to fix it, and it's, and, you know... <clears throat> Go out there and drive that thing all over the place. And I'll tell you what, you start that murmuring and complaining. But what I was going to say, do you know what was interesting? I would hear that a preacher got a brand new vehicle given to him. And then after a while to hear that another preacher had a vehicle given to him. And then I go to visit a preacher and he said, guess what? They got me a vehicle. And you know what I said? Praise God, I'm so glad, brother, that you got one. You know what I had to do? Go to that old First Virginia Bank and borrow money to buy one of them things. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, I rejoice with them, brethren. I rejoice with them. When somebody come pulling in and say, the Lord gave me this big here, I'm going to shout hallelujah, glory to God, I'm happy. I'm happy about it. <clears throat> Y'all are going to be happy when I get that lake too. Yes. Amen. I tell you why. Because you're going to come and help fish. I tell you, don't go fishing with Maxine. That woman, I tell you what, she get down on her knees, kisses them big fish, and I'm here going, <laughs> and it's blank. And Maxine, <clears throat> down on her knees. Pull in a five pounder and take that knot and pull in another. And the old captain says, Dan, I thought you was an expert fisherman. You're the fisherman when you was a young fella. I said, Leroy, I don't know what the trouble is. So he comes over like a little child and he says, Let me dribble some feast stuff down here. Now put the line in there and get ready. And I went, got one. And then he goes, ha, 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 you got one at last. I said, go and make fun of me. It's all right, I'll make fun of you next. No, I'm not. But I tell you what, Maxine down on her knees catching fish. I couldn't get on my knees. My knees, man, I tell you, that old boat was too hard for my knees. Rolling around the water, flopping. <clears throat> but she can fish in the lake. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to have to have a lake soon because I'm going to have to enjoy it. <clears throat> now, let me see. I got uh, one more. Shall I just quit now or should I get one more? All right, now listen. <clears throat> now, this is the hard one. Maybe we ought to quit. <laughs> you know, I think I ran 18 minutes past. But listen, this is, uh, this is free. <laughs> Are you willing to wait for that desire to be manifested? Are you willing to wait for that desire to be manifested? While you're waiting, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. <clears throat> That's Psalms 27, 14. I tell you what, what you're going to do while you're waiting is you're going to talk. See, I'm waiting on my lake, and I'm talking. I'm even inviting you to my lake. Where is it? I don't know. We'll find out later. But I got one coming. A lake is a whosoever, and I'm a whatsoever. No, wait a little, I'm wrong. <laughs> the, the lake is a whatsoever, and I'm a whosoever. <coughs> <laughs> so I talked to that lake lake come here now I'd look funny if a thing was out there when I got outside I don't mean come out in the yard here I mean just come into existence I'm going to ask you tonight 
What is on your heart right now that's got to come to pass, and I mean it's got to come to pass, and you mean it's got to come to pass because you've got Bible to back you up that whatsoever, whosoever shall say it, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And <clears throat> he said it, I said it, and we said it. Heaven's agreeing with me. Now it's we. Heaven and me and we. Okay. And what you got tonight? <clears throat> Are you ready for blessing? It's words that got you where you are. It is words that'll get you out of the muck. far better than this I'm homesick for heaven where loved ones have gone who are safe in his wonderful care if we could but hear from our loved ones so dear they all say they